OK, let's talk about uh, a different story now and what we saw at the weekend uh, in Sydney and Melbourne. There is no doubt that anti-Semitism is on the rise. I'm deeply, deeply disturbed by the scenes we saw in Caulfield on Friday night, Laura. Um, people are entitled to protest for whatever cause they like, but to choose Caulfield, to choose a park across from a synagogue and to choose Shabbat where Jews go to pray uh, at their shul or synagogue or where they gather in their homes for a Shabbat dinner with their families seems to me like a very deliberate choice. It seems to me like a choice that was designed to intimidate, that it was at times to, in, designed to incite and it had exactly the predictable effects that we thought it would. Hmm. And the Jewish community is in even more fear than they already were for their safety. We saw that shocking uh, rally through Sydney, uh, deliberately going through suburbs where there are a number of Jewish Australians who live, uh, terminating in Coogee. We've seen, uh, seen graffiti on Jewish-owned businesses. We've seen graffiti on, a, on the home of a Jewish uh, rabbi. And we've also seen an alleged assault of two uh, young men in the Jewish community on Saturday night. I've spoken to one of those victims and he's briefed me on what happened to them. It was a shocking uh, act of intimidation and violence, which what I believe the police them, are now James? investigating. Well, they were returning home on Saturday night from a night out with their friends driving through Caulfield and they noticed uh, two suspicious vehicles. So they did a U-turn to drive past and see what those vehicles were doing. Um, they couldn't determine what they're doing, so they continued on with their journey. And unbeknownst to them, those vehicles followed them into a side street in Caulfield, where, in, in Residential Street, where they'd parked to drop off their friends. Mm. Uh, one car pulled up behind them, one car pulled up beside them, and uh, a number of men got out of the car and surrounded the car and physically assaulted two of the passengers of the car uh, in the process of demanding access to their phones to demonstrate whether or not they'd been filmed or photographed. Um, the men who surrounded the car apparently said that they had been there for the protests, even though the protests had occurred 24 hours before. Um, and the young men are understandably very shaken up by this incident and have reported to police. And it's critically important that the police follow through on these uh, this incident and, and ensure that these people are prosecuted if they have breached the law, which it sounds like they might have. Yeah, indeed, uh, you're right these intimidatory tactics of not just rallies being held by pro-Palestinians but um, some more intimidatory uh, figures going to Jewish areas of Australia and that has a chilling effect uh, on so many families. I just want to end by asking you about Penny Wong's uh, comments. She didn't call for a ceasefire. She called for Israel to make steps towards one. What is wrong with that? I think it's a very, very generous interpretation, Laura. Is that the ceasefire we're having when we're not really having a ceasefire? She well, used those that's words. What she that's said, a very though. deliberate choice of words. Yeah, she yeah, used those words, Yeah, and it's a very words, deliberate though. choice of words. Um, the Australian government has never previously called for a ceasefire or steps towards a ceasefire. Our American allies, the Biden administration, are not doing so. And there's very good reason for that. Of course, there should be a ceasefire after Hamas is defeated and after the hostages are released. But until then, any ceasefire will just allow Hamas to continue to control Gaza. And they have said themselves they intend to use Gaza as a landing base for further operations against Israel. The people of Israel and the people of Gaza will never be safe while Hamas remains in charge, and a ceasefire will facilitate that. And I'm disappointed and concerned that Penny Wong has announced what appears to be a shift in government policy on insiders. I understand she did not give a heads up to the Israeli ambassador or embassy. I understand she did not give a heads up to the Jewish community. She has previously been very critical of the previous government for announcing foreign policy initiatives, including on insiders. Mm. And it appears to me that she's done the same. If the government is trying to walk back her comments this morning and say she wasn't calling for a ceasefire, I think that's a good thing. But I think she herself needs to be very clear about that because it is a significant shift if that's what the government is doing. I don't think anyone's walking it back so far. Have you seen, have you seen that? Well, I just interpreted from your comments, Laura, uh, oh, no. passing her comments, saying she wasn't calling for a ceasefire. It was only steps towards a ceasefire. I, oh, mean, no. I think that's a, yeah, a but she, distinction. I'm just, I, I just words are so important in this debate. You know that, James. So I'm just saying I agree. exactly what she said. She didn't um, call for an immediate ceasefire. She said steps towards one. And I think that nuance is really mm. important, is it not? I agree with you. And that point about words yeah. being important is really critical because, unfortunately, we, are, we do see here in Australia tempers being whipped up and people getting very uh, act activated over what is being mm. said. And so for the foreign minister on insiders to accuse Israel of, of attacking hospitals and for other ministers in the government to leave open the possibility that Israel is guilty of genocide or crimes, or crimes against humanity or war crimes 
is a very dangerous and inflammatory thing to do when we should be urging calm. I am deeply afraid, Laura, that something terrible is going to happen in this country. All the signs are there. Mm -hmm. And when you have synagogues being shut down on Shabbat because police fear for the safety of the occupants because there's a protest outside. Mm. I think we need to call that out and we need to call it out for what it is, which is anti-Semitism. Yeah, well, look, I, I was pretty James, disappointed I'm, it took the Prime yeah, Minister. Look, I, I'm less concerned, took... to be frank, about um, Penny Wong's calls for steps towards a ceasefire. What I'm uh, concerned about is really not much from Anthony Albanese overnight in terms of condemnation of what we saw uh, in Caulfield, there were kind of veiled references on um, Remembrance Day, um, and also yeah. um, from from Richard Miles saying essentially, look, um, we don't want um, any um, criticism. Essentially, we don't want any of these feelings being whipped up on either side of the bait. We don't want to see uh, Islamophobia. We don't want to see mm. uh, any mm. anti-Semitism. But what you are seeing is these intimidatory tactics in Jewish areas, I don't think you see Jews going into, um, you know, predominantly Muslim suburbs in Australia with flags. Correct me if I'm wrong. Agreed, Laura. Yeah. I agree with you. The Prime Minister has failed to show leadership here. Uh, it took him 24 hours before he said anything about the uh, protests in Caulfield. And when he did, it was a very generic statement about how we should all be very nice to each other and we should all get along. Yeah. What we saw was a specific instance of anti-Semitism. Uh, if there is ever yeah. a day where there is a protest outside a mosque that caught, leads to those Friday night prayers being cancelled and people being evacuated, I'll be among the first to call out Islamophobia. And when there are instances of Islamophobia, we should call it out. Yeah. But on Friday night... We we didn't see Islamophobia, we saw anti-Semitism and it needs to be called out because it is on the rise. And mm. the stats from my home state of Victoria at least are very clear. The police have arrested nine people for instances of anti-Semitism and one person for the instance of Islamophobia. I think it's very clear the problem we have on this hands in this country right now. Okay. It is anti-Semitism and if we don't deal with it, something terrible is going to happen. James, thanks so much for your time as always. Thanks, Laura.